Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Rebels TV for another week. Yes, we've checked this week. Yes, the sound is working. We're coming across loud and clear. No repeat of the Lost Files like we did last week. We're back and we're in full audio. Although, the Lost Files did produce a casualty, as you can see, Philip James Partington III. Not here this week, in fact, has decided to flee the country altogether in embarrassment after that, but we found a more than adequate replacement to fill in his large shoes as co-host this week. Not only is he the coach of the North Carolina Rebels, he is also the game's record holder for coaching in the Victorian Football League. I speak, of course, of Jared Fitzgerald. Fitzy, welcome to the Rebels TV. Good morning, Sean. Check on. Back of that, welcome. Now, of course. If, if the technology doesn't work today, I might go too, do I? Oh, we might have to. We'll have to see what's happening. But I've checked the technology. I think we're up and about. And of course, Fitzy, not your first time on Rebels TV. No. Little known fact that you actually made history as the first ever co-host on Rebels TV. So glad to have you yeah. back in the studio. Good, Sean. That's a record that I'll cherish. Yeah, it is <laughs> indeed. Now, let's get straight into it because we've got a big, big game to talk about from the past weekend. Took on the Murray Bush Rangers in the top three, a game that we really set ourselves for. You set it up as a finals-like atmosphere, and the boys delivered in spades. As you can see on the screen, 27-point victory. Probably our most significant victory for the season to date. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting when you, um, from a coaching viewpoint, you actually make a decision to say, right, now let's rehearse what a final looks like. Mm -hmm. There can be some people say, can you carry away with yourself, mate? It's not finals time. Yeah. Well, let's, we know that. Yeah. Of course. But there's nothing wrong, if, oh, my view, but there's nothing wrong now and again trying to put your players through a full dress rehearsal in all types of situations. Mm. And we do that training sometimes. We have one team which is, needs to kick the next two goals to win a game. One team needs to try and secure a game. Yep. That's a situation. One team plays fast footy, one team plays slow football. How does the mob playing slow footy keep the ball? How does the mob that wants to play fast get it off the slow team? Um, and I thought to have a dress rehearsal of a final, given that it was our last documented game against a team in the top two or three. Mm. So why not have it as a final? Yep. See how we go on and off the field and um, learn from it in case we get the chance to play in the finals. Yep. No, very, very good build up for that one as well. And really interesting game. Obviously, we go through the game in great detail, which is up after game day each week on Federation Uni Coaches Corner. And we thank you very much for your time with that throughout the year. But one thing that we missed talking about this week was the fact that we kind of, we reversed a trend of recent weeks as well, where we found that after half time, we just slip away a little bit and let the opposition in. This time it was the other way around and we really, Put the, met, put the pedal to the metal, so to speak, in the second half and ran away with the game, especially early in that last quarter. Yes, our, our, the, the, the style of our footy um, and our adherence to our method, or our style as we call it, was very, very strong. So um, you, you would hope, Sean, that it's been a product of learning some pretty severe lessons mm. in recent weeks. The, I know how flattened our blokes were after outplaying the Dragons for long mm. periods of time to then come up with a loss and lose it in dramatic circumstances late. I uh, thought we, we secured the game pretty well against mm. the Jets, <clears throat> but you're right, there were some elements of the game, particularly that early part of the last quarter, um, under pressure against the Bushies, where I thought we were terrific, and uh, to be able to almost secure the game in 10 minutes was a great sign. We really pride ourselves on the fact that the system that we've got here at the Rebels mm. this year is the real strength and the game plan that we've got, the mm. fact that we can plug players into our game plan and the same result happens. We saw that against the Dragons, we saw that against the Geelong Falcons even as well, and obviously against the Western Jets, but we bring some quality players back into the team this week and still makes a very big difference when you bring class in. Guys like Huey McCluggage, Will and Drew, just for their physicalness, their cleanness around football, it makes a big difference. Yeah, and, and what I'm in, enjoying is that this year we've challenged our, our high quality mids to not just gather a lot of the ball, but to be able to go forward and impact the game via the scoreboard. So mm. Probably, I think Huey might have kicked three on the Three goals, 34 disposals. Drew, we got a couple. Mm -hmm. So there's five goals from what we call the inside mids. James Gow has consistently kicked goals he has. for the year. Um, got one on the weekend. Yeah. A little, little cheapy in the goal square, but he got one. There it is. But there he, it is on the screen at the moment. But he, but he gets one. And yeah. So therefore, if we're going to get sort of beyond the 14 goals or up near the 100 points, mm. we're going to need some goals 
from our genuine midfielders, playing as forwards, not playing on the ball. Getting some good results from the forwards in recent weeks as well, though. We saw Jordan Johnson a couple of weeks ago have his day out with seven goals. And on the weekend, Aaron Shepard, mm. his first TAC Cup game, and really gave us an extra target in there. Shannon Bex has been doing a great job all year, giving us a target yes, deep yes. forward. Yeah. But having Shep there as well with some really strong hands and a very, very accurate set mm. shot, mm. just added that little bit extra extra dimension, I reckon. Kicked three goals on the weekend yeah. and a really impressive day, though. Yeah, yeah. We're very, very happy for Aaron because he's... Um, the coaches and I had been noticing him. Well, we thought his pre-season games, there was a few of them where he caught our attention. Mm. Um, but then in our situational training, as we referred to it, we might have spoken about after the game. Yeah, I think we did. That he, he actually, um, within the situation training, with, within the game structure, but also when he goes down to the more defined forward line special work, he has come across us a bit. But what we, what we did admire was the fact that he's been playing extremely well at his local club. Mm. Feedback coming through from his coach, Luke Crane, has been strong. Yep. Um, but he, as you said, he, he made the most of his chances. Now, he kicks one goal too. We're probably not talking We're about We're sitting it. there talking, oh yeah, it's an okay day, boo, yeah. and maybe there's a few things to work on. Yeah, you, you kick three goals and, um, and impact the game. Mm. And two of those late as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. One at the really crucial time at the end of that third quarter in red time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we were happy with him and we, we sort of shuffled him around the forward line a bit. So. Yes, yeah, good start. Was indeed time now for our Mars player of the week, though, and this boy coming back into the side has had a fantastic year at all levels of football that he's played at. As we mentioned before, 34 disposals, three goals on the weekend. Great to have Huey McCluggage back into the side this week, Coach. Oh, yeah, he has in his form this year, been terrific, and um, a leader within the group um, for the obvious reasons. Um, came through a, a challenging pre season where a lot of what we were wanting to do with him was severely interrupted. Mm -hmm. with back soreness. Um, obviously, then the load above and beyond this level here with his nationals, etc. Um, probably now dealing a little bit of pressure of expectation. Mm, definitely. Um, but I just really admire Huey's um, just his resilience, but also his, his, his just genuine common sense. Mm. He's just a, a, an intelligent boy who um, got a fair grasp on where he's at at the moment, where he wants to go. Um, I don't think he plays that way. He, he does. He, he plays according to his character. Yeah, certainly does indeed. And let's see how good a public speaker he is as well, because we had a chat to him after the game, as we do every week for our Mars Player of the Day. So let's have a chat with you, McCluggage. We're here with our Mars Player of the Day for the Round 13 win against the Murray Bush Rangers, Hugh McCluggage. Here we back into the TAC Cup system, mate, after a few weeks off. How did you find it? Um, yeah, it's good to be back. Obviously, learn a lot through the um, state championships, but... Um, yeah, it's great to be back, and the boys have definitely improved since we left. So, yeah, it's been really yeah, good. Yeah, you find your time obviously playing with the country in the national championships, four games obviously, and some, some really good footy. Yeah, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, some of the blokes you play against are pretty high quality, so you learn a lot playing against them. And yeah, um, hopefully myself, Dewey, and Bez, and Willow, and all the other boys can bring it back to Tat Cup and probably showed today the way we played. As a team, it probably bring a bit more experience back in. So. And you could see that indeed, obviously. A really good team game played by the boys. They hit some real KPIs and yep. knocked off a top three side, which is the first time we've done it this year. Yeah, it's a great feeling getting that win. Um, it's probably a long time coming. At the start of the year, we played some pretty good sides and we weren't just, probably weren't quite there. So, um, yeah, great feeling and all the boys are pretty pumped after that win. Your game today, you managed to get a bit of a chop out up forward in the last quarter. How did you find that playing more has gone further and forward? Yeah, I enjoy going up forward. Um, got a good group of boys down there, so working with Bexie and Jono and all those boys, it's um, yeah, it's good and good ball coming in through our pretty quality midfielders, so yeah, it helps yeah, a lot. Great game today, mate. Congratulations on it. Great to have you back in the Rebel system. We'll look yeah. forward to more of it in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks, Sean. Cheers. Hugh McCluggage, our Mars player of the day for this weekend. As you take a sip of the tea, coach, very impressive speaker as well to add to his obvious football talents. Yes, yeah, well, we, we admire the, the, the school he's at, Belmont mm -hmm. Clarendon College. We, we think they do a very good job in the overall development and education yep. of their students. Uh, obviously, he's a boarder there, but also know his family well, and yep. just know they're well grounded, mm -hmm. um, good, good people. He reflects both his um, the influence of his parents and his family, and also the influence of his school. And um, we're all proud of him. We are indeed. We're also proud of this next person that's going inside 60 this week for Blue Gum Clothing, of course, the most popular segment on Rebels TV every weekend. 
It's a gentleman that we haven't seen a heck of a lot of on the field this year, and through a couple of injuries, but also through some high-level representation as well. We've dragged the skipper in this week for Inside 60, Jared Berry coach, a player who has a very, very bright future and who we're very much looking forward to seeing back on the park, hopefully after the development round. Yeah, yeah, I, it'll be good to catch up to Bez um, in the next week or so, just to sort of plan now mm. what, what we want to achieve with him, because he knows and we know that we have actually 16 quarters of footy left yep. in this season. So even though, as we said to the boys after the game and during the week, it, look, it's cold, it's wet, mm. It's about mid-July. Yep. But hang on, this it's season snow is in Ballarat in this way. That's right. This season is slipping away quickly. And it's a bit of a trend I've always, a bit of a saying I've always had. Yeah. You know, just later than you think. Exactly. So we think now uh, to well, that we we were we were wise to keep Jared out of footy on the weekend. Mm -hmm. He can then have the buy as well now to freshen right up. I think the challenge for him now will be to influence games. Yep. In the way that he plays. Um, in, in the next set of games, so um, he can just play on the footy, get forward of the footy, kick some goals, um, grab some big moments, all the things that he's capable of being able to do, mm -hmm. I think uh, he'll finish the year off really well then and be happy with his year as a skipper and as a player um, and, how, and how he plays at the end of the year. Speaking of grabbing big moments, he's about to do that at the moment as he goes inside six. It'll be interesting to see who's in the gun for Jared Berry this week. Let's have a look at it. Thanks to Blue Gun Clothing, Inside 60 with Jared Berry. Midfield. Ah, Joel Sowell. Porsche Saints Football Network Club. Ah, very interesting. Um, probably Kyle O'Connor. Um, there's not very funny ones, but uh, probably Will and Drew. Jake McQueen because oh he's just a little little tip rat. Um, probably winning the carnival last year. Yeah. Uh, I have to say human baggage. Um, probably Jacob Weedering, yeah. Jared Berry on Inside 60, thanks to Blue Gum Clothing and a good job by Bezzer as well. Didn't miss too many there, he's done quite nicely. Really? So, um, yes, he, uh, he's used to those sorts of things. He is. He is indeed, and it's something that may be a lot more in his future, as we know. But this weekend, no Rebels footy this weekend. The development round, the first of a couple that are coming up in the next few weeks as well. There's Leading into what could be a finals campaign, I think there's three development rounds slash buys in the period as well. So a really good chance to kind of rest and everything. One thing I wanted to know, Coach, was your philosophy behind the development round and boys going back and potentially playing with local clubs and everything like that, especially guys like... An, I pull names like Lachlan Huppets that's played just about every TAC Cup game this year. Jordan Johnson, who's played some high game time in games this year. Haskell Dorbin and Clay Bilney that have also played high game time. Yeah. What's your philosophy? Do you let the players decide whether they go back and play or do you say to some of them, maybe just encourage them to just sit back and have a rest if they've had a high workload? Now, the first thing we do, Sean, is that one thing that I think as a, as a football person, mm -hmm. one thing I admire about the TAC Cup competition is that you essentially can do it from home. So you can do your pre-season training from the middle of November right through until the squad's announced yep. from your home base. I think we only dragged them up to Ballarat a couple of times yep. in that period of time. Um, then during the season, uh, we encourage the boys to remain connected to their home club. Mm -hmm. So philosophically, we're okay with them having a game. But what the clubs need to understand is that we will do an analysis of our players individually. Mm. We won't make a blanket rule. So it's no yeah. good thinking, okay, it's a buy or it's a development weekend. Everyone, Everyone can come back home. That's not the case. Um, if the boy is fresh uh, and we believe that it's not going to negatively impact him, well then we like them having a game at home. Mm. 
If they don't play at home, we like them to be involved. Take a training session. Help out with the coaching with the local club, yep. um, etc. So the answer to your question is it is assessed on an individual basis. Yep. It'll be above and beyond the coaching. It'll be a delving into the sports science, what the GPS information is telling us, mm -hmm. what the wellbeing indicators are telling us, what the anecdotal information from our sports science people, because we've got some terrific sports science people here at our club mm -hmm. who are, are taking care of the boys um, on an individual basis, um, on a day-to-day -day basis at times. So um, there's, it's, it's a decision which we, uh, which we don't take lightly, but it's a decision which we take with respect for all of the elements of the decision. Yeah, of course. And the, the good thing is a chance for people like yourself that are obviously very heavily involved within the Rebel system every year to have a bit of a break. We yeah. don't train on Thursday nights during the development no. rounds, obviously Saturday off. So a chance yeah. for yourself and the coaching staff that yeah. work very, very hard, let's, yeah. let's make no mistake about it, yeah. to kind of just sit back, have a bit of a rest, maybe go and watch some local footy and just yeah. kind of have that weekend off. Yeah, and, and also knowing full well, and I did the same when I had the VFL team, mm. um, knowing full well that we won't disrupt that particular weekend with a sudden decision. Yeah. So if we had a loss on the weekend, well, we wouldn't suddenly call a training session on Saturday morning. No, that's right. It, it, it's more out of respect for uh, to be organised, but also be aware of of everyone involved in the organisation. Your volunteer staff, your semi-professional staff, etc. Um, it's a valuable weekend off so that they can go and do something else, so yeah. that they return next Tuesday mentally refreshed as well. Yeah. That's the key thing. It's not just about the physical refreshing, it's the mental refreshing. Certainly is indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we've got on Rebels TV for this week. Fascinating inside look into the Rebel system this week with the coach, Jared Fitzgerald. Coach, thanks for joining us this week. It's been pleasure. an absolute pleasure having you here. Pleasure. And I know that all of our viewers have appreciated it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back next week with more Rebels TV. Another very special guest host next week. We'll leave you in the loop a bit. We won't announce it just yet. We'll, we'll no. let you stew on that one a little bit. It's not going to be the coach. We're going to have somebody else <laughs> from no, within the Rebel system here. Oh, no. we might say that it is a player. Oh, okay that has been playing very, very well in recent weeks as well. So we'll leave you to ponder that one over the next seven days, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week once again here on Rebels TV.